In this video, I'm going to be talking about how I painted the roses on this painting. So a little bit ago, I actually got a comment on one of my past videos where I was varnishing a bunch of my paintings. If I could find out, I'll put it on the screen. The comment was basically saying, hey, I'd love to get a video about how you go about making these paintings. Um, specifically, I think they said like the rose painting. Luckily, I've actually started on a new series of paintings that are incorporating both floral and portrait elements. So I'd love to respond to that comment with this video. So shout out to that commenter. Hope you're watching. So the way I actually went about painting these flowers is actually not that different from the way I paint everything else, I would say. So the basic thing that I do is that I lay down like a base color and as you can see here it's like yellow and like a, a tannish white for the white roses and I, I set down those base colors and then I start working on like the shadows. And so basically when you're working on you know painting these flowers you have to focus on the actual form of the roses and I, I think it's very difficult like roses in particular are probably some of the most difficult flowers to paint um maybe a close second or maybe something that's more difficult is like hydrangeas which is another type of flower that i've painted before in particular i definitely had to focus on you know making these look as best as i could and the th way i went about it is i focused on making sure the highlights and the shadows on these roses were placed in the right way and you know rendered in a way that actually actually makes it look like a rose <laughs> definitely easier said than done even for someone like me who i get complimented plenty of times on how well some of my paintings look and Rarely do I like truly agree because I know it can look better. Um, and when I when I was going through this process, I was you know debating on whether or not these flowers are actually turned out well. And in the end, I think you know they probably ended up a lot better than I expected them to be. But yeah, like I was saying, um, each time I go into the flower, I make sure I have the base color, and then w looking at the reference, I note where the shadows or the darker parts of the flower are like the darker colors on the flower are and i try to render those and then i also pick out the highlighted parts basically the brighter parts of the flower and i uh you know put in lighter colors on those on those sections and something that i always do with every painting you know when i'm working from reference which is you know all the time since I'm the type of artist that you know always uses a reference is i always make sure i'm going back to the reference and comparing it to the actual work that i'm doing and seeing if it translates well i did this a lot especially since you know roses and flowers in general can be very hard to get right and so i was making sure to look back and forth between my painting and my reference to look out for any imperfections and looking for things in the reference where I can interpret those aspects in a way where it will end up looking more like the reference. Not in a way where it's like photorealistic in particular, because I, I don't really try to go a photo, I don't really try to go too photorealistic because I think it's kind of pointless to make photorealistic art in this day and age at least, because we literally have like incredible photography in, at our fingertips, you know, with like social, uh, not social media. I mean, yeah, with social media, but um, what I was trying to say is like with phones and cameras, literally anyone can be a photographer. So um, when it comes to like art in particular, I always feel like that there should be more of an artistic twist to making images. Um, but that honestly could be another video in itself. Let me know what you think about that. But back to what I was saying about these roses. One thing that I, I remember um, noting while I was in the process is making sure I have the right colors. Like for example, this, the rose to, the white rose that's like right next to like the biggest one. So like, if I, if I remember, I'll like point at it. Um, 
there's like a more saturated yellow in the center of that rose. And that's something that I needed to remember as I was going about painting the rest of these roses as well. The different, the different levels of hue that is being represented in each of the flowers is super important to making them feel uh, realistic from what I, from what I can tell at least. And another thing that I really liked as I was going along is later when I was working on some of the last few flowers, I decided to go with like a softer approach with like the one flower that like extends far to the left. I took a very soft approach to rendering the form on that one. And also the one that's like on top of her head, I found that one to be very soft as well. With like, and by soft, I mean that there's no like hard edges of, you know, color between like different sections of the flower. So I find that to be very beautiful. And I'm going to keep that in mind as I continue in this series of flower portrait paintings, you know, coming with a soft approach to some of the way that I render these flowers, because I, I find that to be very very beautiful um, in the end. Another thing that I really liked about this painting, um, you know, especially in the end after seeing the finished result is that I, I really chose a reference with a really great composition. And one thing that I always do is that I always have the main subject on one of the thirds of an, an image composition. If you know anything about composition, you'll know what I'm, I'm talking about. Um, if you're interested in composition, uh, me diving into comp compositions, I can probably make a video about that. Let me know in the comments. But another thing about this composition that I really liked was it kind of flows in, in like an S shaped flow to it. Like from the top, the, your focus kind of goes to the left as it goes down and then back to the right because like your eye kind of like follows the flowers it goes to the face of the woman and then like the rose that she has in her hand it your attention goes to that and then it flows down to her hand and because of the way that the flower is shaped and her arm your attention kind of follows that as well as you're observing the painting and um yeah i really like how it turned out so let me know what you think about this painting. Let me know what you think about the process. If you have any tips about painting flowers, you know, let me know, let us know in the comments. I'm sure there will be people who love to get any advice from any other experienced artists. Let me know if you have any secrets or tips as well, because, you know, I love hearing about, you know, the way that other artists go about painting as well. So yeah. If, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Make sure you follow for more paintings in the future, and I'll see you in the next video.